بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنك لا تنادي فهم يا بني قومي أسودا أعيدوا للدنا أمجاد عصر وفل بالحديد لنا القيوم توصلت إلى قناعة مطلقة لا يمكن لا يمكن أن يقرأ إنسان السيرة النبوية لمحمد ويؤمن بها ويخرج إلى الحياة إنسانا سليما معافى نفسيا وعقليا أنت تذكر الطريقة التي قتل بها السيدة عزماء بنت مروان عندما قطع أتباعه جسدها إربا إربا وهي ترضع طفلها والمشكلة عادوا إليه يكبرون فقال لا يتناطح بها عنزان أنت تعرف أن الماعز تتناطح لأتفه الأسباب ولكن عند محمد قتل امرأة مرضعة سبب أتفه من أن يتناطح به عنزان هل هذا نبي من عند الله؟ The story of the killing of Isma bin Marwan is mentioned by Ibn Sa'd in Kitab Tabakat al Kabir and by the author of Kinzal al Malander No. 44131, who attributes it to Ibn Sa'd, Ibn Adi, and Ibn Nahasakar. What is interesting is that Ibn Adi mentions it in his book Al Kamal on the authority of Jafar ibn Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Asab on authority of Muhammad ibn Ibrahim Ashkshami on authority of Muhammad ibn Al Hajjaj al Akmi on authority of Mujlid on authority of Ashshabi on authority of Ibn Abbas and added that this is not a chain of reporters is not narrated on authority of Mujalid but by Muhammad ibn al-Hajjaj and the all other reporters in the chain accuse Muhammad ibn al-Hajjaj of forging it. It is also reported by ibn al-Ghazi and al alal and is listed among other flawed reports. So according to its is nod, the report is forged, because one of its reporters is notorious for fabricating hadith. So we can therefore conclude that the so-called killing of Asma bint Marwan is inherently false and had never happened. This certainly throws the spanner into office Sultan attempts and the missionaries, which is based upon nothing but hatred, paranoia and xenophobia towards the elect apostle of God, Muhammad peace be upon him. The authentic Sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him prohibits the killing of women in war. Narrated Dan has been Malik. A Jewish woman brought a poisoned, cooked, sheep for the Prophet who ate from it. She was brought to the Prophet and he was asked, Shall we kill her? He said, No. I continued to see the effect of the poison on the palate of the mouth of God's Apostle. The Prophet, peace be upon him refused to kill a woman who did intentionally try to poison him. But the Christian missionaries, by using a fabricated story, wants us to believe that he ordered the killing of a woman who only abused him verbally. Narrated Ibn Omar, Messenger of God, peace be upon him, saw the corpse of a woman who had been slain in one of the raids, and he disapproved of it and forbade the killing of women and children. Due to this prohibition, scholars of Abu Hanifa's Mathab, school of thought, have stated that apostate women are not to be killed because the Prophet, peace be upon him, forbade the killing of women, and since the prohibition is general it includes apostate women. Even after the Prophet's demise, his sunnah remained preserved by the Muslims. Abu Baker advised Yazid, I advise you ten things. Do not kill women nor children nor an aged, infirm person. Do not cut down fruit-bearing trees. Do not destroy an inhabited place. 
Do not slaughter sheep or camel except for food. Do not burn bees and do not scatter them. Do not steal from the booty and do not be cowardly. Here is a question to person who made the interview with this hatred women. What do you think of this quote from the apocryphal Bibles like the Bible of Thomas for example which says There is a story in the infancy gospel of Thomas in which one of Jesus' playmates is killed presumably by Jesus pushing him off a roof. And this little boy's parents, of course, are very upset, very angry at Jesus. Well, Jesus, at this point, has acquired something of a reputation for himself in the village. And so people come around and they say, now, why did you push him off, Jesus? You know, how could you have done such a thing? And Jesus says, I, I didn't push him off. I had nothing to do with his death. And in fact, to provide some, some evidence of his innocence, Jesus raises his playmate from the dead, brings him back to life, and says, Zenon, tell them, did I push you down? Uh, and Zenon says, no, Lord, you didn't, you didn't have anything to do with my death. According to the infancy gospel of Thomas, Jesus, age five, was not only a powerful, strong-willed child who was sometimes willing to heal people, he also had a dark and even malevolent side to his character. They had the young boy Jesus blinding a customer of his father in the carpenter shop for criticizing his father's work in the carpentry shop. I don't think people were looking necessarily for historical accuracy. Disturbing as these stories may have been, like a 21st century audience, early Christians wanted to know more. المسيح رمز السلام لم يحمل سيفا لم يقطع رقبة لم يكفر إنسانا But as for these enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them bring them here and slaughter them before me He said to them But now let the one who has a money bag take it and likewise a knapsack and let the one who has no sword Sell his cloak and buy one. المرسلين فداك روحي وأرواح الأئمة والدعاة رسول العالمين فداك عرضي وأعراض الأحبة والتقاة ويا علم الهدى يفديك عمري وما لي يا نبي سلم النار قدك في الجنة يا رسول الله it seems that Wafa Sultan has little to no knowledge about either the Bible or the Holy Quran. فداك الكون يا عطر السجايا فما للناس دونك من زكاتي فأنت قداسة إما استحلت فذاك الموت من قبل الممات ولو جحد البرية منك طولا لكبوا في الجحيم مع العصاة وعرضك عرضنا ورؤاك فينا بمنزلة الشهادة والصلاة رفعت منازلا وشرحت صدرا ودينك ظاهر رغم العدات وذكرك يا رسول الله زاد تضاء به أسارير الحياة وغرسك مثمر في كل صقع وهديك مشرق في كل ذات وما لجنان عدل من طريق 
بغير هداك يا علم الهداة وأعلى الله شأنك في البرايا وتلك اليوم أجل المعجزات ولم تنطق عن الأهواء يوما وروح القدس